Hey guys, welcome back to Crafts Go Bloom, and it's time for another market vlog. This is our second market in person, and so it is the first time that we've ever gone to this event. And I am going to show you everything that I'm taking, uh, tell you all my prices, and then I will edit on some updates of the market from tomorrow. It's tomorrow. And it's a one-day market on um, Saturday morning and early afternoon. So I will show you some video clips of it before and after. And then when it's finished, I will let you know what we sold and how much money we made. So stick around to the end to see those details. First up, I've got scrunchies. And these are $5 each. And I have a bunch of different colors. I only have one purple left. Purple seems to be my most popular color so I really need to um, make some more of those I don't think I'll get it done by tomorrow but I will try to get them done for my next market I have some five dollar keychains that I made some of and my daughter made some of she helps run this business with me these keychains and the scrunchies are buy three get one free my daughter also made these bracelets that are five dollars each and I think this time around we're going to see how they sell and if they don't sell very well this time around we're going to um, add them into the buy three, get one free deal and see how that does. But for this market, we're gonna test it out just having them on this bracelet stand and see if that's better than the trays that we had them in at the last market. And I got this bracelet stand a few years ago from a Charming Charlie when it was going out of business. We've actually just had this around the house with our own jewelry on it for a while and we don't use it anymore, so it became a market setup. You don't have to necessarily buy these off Amazon. You can look for market display things that are coming from stores that are going out of business in your area. Just some market tips along the way here. I have my Excel sheet of what's sold from my previous market. And on that Excel sheet, I've got how many of each item I took to the last market. So as I go through and I make this video and I'm looking through my stock of stuff, I'm taking notes on how many items I have left. I've of course restocked some things, so those numbers have fluctuated in different directions depending on the item, but I'm going to keep going through and updating my list so that I can just change those numbers on my computer and then print out the list for tomorrow. Now on to some more crochet items. I have a basket full of bears and this bear is my pattern. I have a few of those. And then the other pattern, this is by Units, and it's a free pattern on Instagram. All of the patterns I mention here today are going to be in a Google Doc that's linked below. And the reason I have to put them in a Google Doc is because it's too many patterns to have that long of a description on YouTube. Um, under a video, you only get so many characters. So all you're going to do is click on that Google Doc. It'll open up in another window, and then I have it listed in the order that you're seeing them in this video, and they're all links that you can click on and go straight to where that pattern is. Up next, I have my dog pattern that I will leave a link for, and sometimes I make this with the ears floppy, and sometimes I make this with the ears sewn down. And you're going to see me holding up most of these items in this basket, I do not have that many of this basket. I'm just taking the items, putting them in this basket, and then it makes it easier for me to hold all of them. Um, I don't have a, like a market set up with 25 of these baskets, but I'm just using it for the purpose of this video. I only have two of these baskets, and I do use them in my market setup that you'll see later. Up next, I have 13 of these Triceratops in varied colors. A few things I forgot to mention. Uh, the keychain, some of the keychains and the scrunchies are made out of Bernat Velvet yarn. Everything else is made out of Bernat Blanket yarn. And the bears, the dogs, and the triceratops are all $10 each. Up next, I've got my cat pattern. I've got a video tutorial for this on my channel and a pattern in my Etsy shop. And I have 15 cats total. I have these 11 plus. I have these and this one. All of these cats are made from the same exact pattern. I was just changing up the yarns that I used, and all of these cats are $10 each. Up next, I have this whale pattern by Katie Being Creative, and these are made out of a mixture of Bernat blanket, I have one out of a Bernat Forever fleece, and then some Big Twist Cuddle, and these are $10 each. 
Up next, I have these mushroom keychains in different colors for $12. And I have a jellyfish keychain for $15. I have three of these leggy frog keychains. This green one is made out of Big Twist Value. And then these multicolored ones are made out of the Just Chenille yarn from the Dollar Tree in the US. I have a bunch of my cat pattern in that same Just Chenille yarn, and these plus the leggy frogs are all $10 each. I have some more um, kind of random keychains for $10 each. A bee, a whale. I said that wrong. Here's the whale over here in the green. This is an octo. I have a chicken nugget, another whale, a little frog, another little uh, grumpy frog, and a bear, and these are all $10 each. Up next, I have this very large cat for $70. This took over three hours to make, so that's why it does cost more. And this is um, a pattern that is written for a smaller worsted weight yarn, and so it's supposed to come out quite a bit smaller. So it turned out pretty big, and I think it's pretty fun. It's just kind of my big attention getter that sits on the end of my table. Um, I don't I don't honestly expect to sell something that costs this much at every market, but it is there as an attention grabber, and I like that. I also have this worsted weight baby blanket for 70 that has a striped pattern to it. Up next, I have four bees for $15, and um, my kids had different, differing opinions, so I used different size eyes just to have different options, and these are in a lighter yellow color. And then I made two in a brighter, it's a darker yellow. I think this one is called Sun Soaked by Bernat Velvet. Excuse me, by Bernat Blanket Yarn. Up next, I have six of this gummy bear pattern and I believe these are seven dollars each. Up next I have four of these apple slices for ten dollars. I only have one more of this little strawberry for seven dollars. Um, I started out with four at my last market so this was a great seller for me. And then I have seven of these blueberries in different shades of blue for seven dollars and some of them have glitter eyes and just different options. I have these two different chicken nugget patterns for $15, and then I have seven of these dino nuggets for $10 each, and there's actually five different patterns, different uh, dino nugget shapes going on in there. The strawberry that I showed you earlier is my small strawberry for seven, and then I have these large strawberries for $10. I have five of my watermelon pattern for $10 each. Up next, I have nine of my Chip the Chick pattern, and I've got a tutorial for this on YouTube, as well as a pattern that you can purchase, the PDF, in my Etsy store. And these are $10 each. I adapted my Baby Chick pattern into a couple of birds, so I have two of those for $10 each. I have three bunnies for $7 each. I have three of this No So Turtle pattern that I really like for $10 each. I have this cupcake for $15. I have two of this style s'more for $15 each. And I have two of this style s'more for $15 each. Up next, I have two of this ice cream cone pattern by Katie Being Creative. And I made this one to look like sherbet and this one to look like strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate. I, sold, I only made one of these for my last market and I sold it. So I decided to make two and see how they go. And they're $30 each. I have three of this toddler bag for $15 each, this cute purse. I have two of these baskets, nesting baskets that I made that are $25 and $30 each. I have two of these large mushrooms for $35 each. I have three of this chick pattern for $30 each, and this is written uh, to be made in a size 4 worsted weight yarn, and so they're supposed to be a little handheld chick, but I decided to make them in chunky weight six yarns to see how they would look. I have one of my pineapple pattern for $40 and I sold one of these at my last market so I was restocking this one. I also have one of my pineapple pattern in worsted weight yarn for $25 and I had a velvet one at my last market that I sold and I just ran out of time for this market to get that made but I plan on making another velvet one as well. I have two of my jumbo watermelon pattern 
This is the same pattern. This is just made in chunky yarn and this is in worsted weight yarn. And the large pillow is 50 and the small is 20. I have a pillow out of Bernat velvet yarn that my daughter free handed with some embroidery floss in like a rainbow type design and that is 25. I have four of these pop mushrooms. Um, that's not what they're called, this is what I end up calling them. I'll leave the pattern linked in the Google Doc like I said. So I have that orange and green and then I have those cookies and cream and a white and yellow. And I sold out of these at my last market so I decided to restock them and they are $15 each. Up next, I have seven of these No So Mushrooms. It's a free pattern on Instagram, and they just about sold out at my last market, so I restocked these, and they're $15 each. I made five of this Octo pattern for $10 each, and here's the other two, and this one has glitter eyes. I got two of these pickles for $15 each. I have this penguin for $15, and the top of it is made out of Bernat Blanket Sparkle. I have two axolotls that are $30 each, and this one is completely made out of Bernat Blanket Sparkle yarn, so it looks quite glittery in person. I have two of this fish pattern for $25 each, one alligator for $15, one lizard for $7, this octo, which is $10. This is my patriotic cat pattern for $15. This is my unreleased cow pattern, kind of hard to see the white in this lighting, and that will be $10. I have a bunny for $25. I have a baby bird for $10. I have five of this multicolored brown mushroom for $15 each. Up next, I have crayons for $15 each, and then here are all the pinks and yellows and reds. I have a bunch of this frog pattern for $10 each. The grumpy one is hiding, but the grumpy ones are my favorite. Up next, I have this lamb lovey for $40. I have two of these llama loveys for $40. I have one of this no so dog pattern for $10. And I have leggy frogs. <laughs> for $10 each. These are all the green ones I have. And then I have them in various colors as well. I have these two chickens that are not my chicken pattern. I have tail feathers. They're very cute though. And these are $35 each. And then I have three chickens that are my chicken pattern. And these are $35 each as well. So those are all the plushies that I'm going to be taking to my, my second market. I'm also going to be taking some winter hats. Now, if you're not watching this, the time that it was recorded, this is a market in the middle of July in the Midwest. It's hot out. We don't need hats. No one's going to be buying hats, but I always take the extra that I have so that my booth never looks completely empty so we can fill in with some of those off-season items that I have. And that is everything that I'm going to be taking to my market. My goal is to make a certain dollar amount someday and so the way I plan for these markets is by making sure that I have enough products that doubles that monetary goal and that's how I have been dealing with it. So if you want to make, let's make the math easy, let's say you want to make a hundred dollars then you take two hundred dollars worth of products with you. This is only my second market so I can say yes so far that has gone well but my first market got rained out on the second day. So we did great for the amount of time that it was actually open. I uh, didn't hit that monetary goal that we wanted, but we didn't do too bad for the fact that it got rained out the second day. The weather looks nice for this event tomorrow. It's just a one day event that's only running from nine to one. So I'm not sure what that's going to do to our profits for it to be one day and to only be in the beginning half of the day. But uh, that's all I've got for now. I'll edit on what my booth setup looked like, and then I will be back to let you know all of the things that sold and how it went and what we made. So I will see you guys then. Hey guys, it's been about 10 days since our market that I showed you all the things that I was taking to the market. It's been about 10 days since I filmed that clip. So I'll insert some footage here of what our setup looked like. We 
changed it up after this is our second market in person. After the first market, we noticed that we could just improve some things, improve how they looked. We had some taller um, stands in the back of the tables. And I thought that would be better so that it wouldn't visually like block people's view if it was out in the front. But we moved them around this time and had them out front as like an attention getter so that you could see more things if you were walking by from a distance. And I think that worked out really well for us. So despite our beautiful setup with wonderful products, we made a huge mistake in going to this market because there was no traffic. This market went from nine to one and I think there were like 15 people who came all day. We sold one scrunchie for $5, but it cost $20 to go to this market. And the person who paid for the scrunchie paid with um, an app on their phone. And so we had to pay the fees through the app. So we lost like $16 and a weekend of our lives by going to this market. It was so bad that I, I just have to laugh at it. This is the kind of thing that you just like... It's such a fail, it's just funny. It was an event that I saw on Facebook, it's local to me, and I have seen it advertised year after year. So I thought that it was going to be a good one. I knew the clientele at this particular venue was in a higher price bracket than, or a higher income bracket than other markets in our area. So I really thought that it was going to be a good one to go to. And I saw it advertised on Facebook multiple times. However, I learned my lesson that just because you see it advertised multiple times does not mean it's advertised multiple places on Facebook, like different groups and things. My seeing it advertised multiple times was on a fairly small group, which was where I definitely made the mistake of thinking that this was going to be uh, very exciting at all. So now we know for next year, we're not going to be going back to that one. It wasn't a complete waste of our time as it was monetarily a complete waste of our time. However, as far as gaining knowledge going forward in the future, I don't think that it was a waste. I think that now it was a great time to, um, to just learn more about what we're doing. The weather was nice. It wasn't too hot. It didn't rain. So other than just losing the time, it was a good experience to know better going forward in the future. And so <laughs> since we were so discouraged and we had everything all packed up and ready to go, I had filmed the first part of this video and I didn't want the end of it to be, I lost $16 and two days of my life. <laughs> We just kept everything packed up and we started searching to see if we could get into a market the following weekend. That normally doesn't work well because you sign up for these events sometimes months in advance. I signed up for an event in December in July and some of them are even farther out than that. I didn't have much hope that we were going to find a great event but I thought maybe we could just make an event, find an event that we could get into kind of last minute and just recoup our booth fees and time for the weekend. So I sent out messages to all kinds of people. Hey, if you have a last minute opening, let me know. I found one event that was outdoors in a parking lot. And so I thought, and the parking lot is bigger than what they usually do for the event. So I thought this is probably my best bet because they could probably tack on one more vendor and still have the space. And we wouldn't, it's not like an indoor event where just when the space is out, the space is out. And they ended up having someone cancel at the last minute and they were looking for someone to jump right in. I sent them a message and let them know. I, I treated it like a job interview. I said, hey, I'm packed. I'm ready to go. I'm highly motivated. I can be there. You know, you can count on us and we have a product. Here's a couple pictures of what I sell. Here's a picture of my setup from um, a previous market so they can see like I'm not just joking around. I'm in business. I sent them that message. They uh, they run like a boutique store and they were closed for a few days and I didn't hear back from them. And I was like, well, that's fine, you know. But then as soon as the store opened up uh, after the weekend, they, uh, they got back to me and said someone canceled and they were happy to have us. I was quite glad. I did my research better on this event. And there was a Facebook event for it that had 
hundreds of people <laughs> responding and sharing it and going and in the discussion inside of that event. And for my area, that's probably like a, a medium sized event to have that many people responding. I know some others that have thousands of people responding, but in my area, we probably only get those, those kinds of events, maybe like a dozen a year or so that would have thousands of people responding. So after we booked that event and paid our fee, this time it was a $35 fee, I started making a few more items, even though I sold nothing the week before, because I had a few gaps in prices. I had like some $10 items and some $30 items, but I didn't have a lot in between. So I was trying to kind of fill in my pricing gaps and I wanted to make some items that have yarn eyes so that they would be safer for kids. So I went ahead and filmed a little clip of everything else that I decided to take to this second market in a row. So I'll add that here. Just popping in for a little update here. I have made some extra things I'm going to be taking to my market. And as I talked about previously, my last market was an absolute dud. So I really didn't need to restock anything, but I decided to make some new patterns I'd never made before to go ahead and add those and test them out. I think that this market is going to be a lot better than my last one. There's quite a few people interested online and it looks like it's going to have a better turnout. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these sea turtles for $30. I have four of this jellyfish pattern. And this has these cute tentacles. Those are $30 each as well. I added two more Octos. I've got some more like toddler friendly jellyfish that don't have safety eyes. I wanted to test out how my customers like having something without safety eyes. And then over here, I made two more of my cat pattern and I did this one in a Cheshire cat style. This is my bear. This is a mermaid that uh, has a little mermaid tail. This pattern is one pattern, like the body is one pattern, and then the hair is actually from a different mermaid pattern. Um, I really like the hair that came with this original mermaid body pattern, but it needed to be chenille yarn in order to curl the way that it's supposed to curl, and I only had burnet, so I just improvise some different hair and this is Burnett Blanket Sparkle. So um, it, actually all three of the colors here are sparkle and then I've got sparkly eyes so I hope that that goes well. And this is $60. And my cats and my bear are $10 each like usual. And then back here I have three of this turtle that is actually a pop turtle like the pop mushrooms. Oops, sorry about that. Like the pop mushrooms that I've shown you before. And these are $15 each. And then the last extra thing for my market is actually wow. a pattern that my daughter wrote. And then my daughter made this. Um, and this is going to be $12 each. And I'm not sure as at the time of filming this if this pattern will be in my Etsy shop yet, but we do plan to put it in my Etsy shop and then anybody who purchases that pattern, that money just goes straight to her. So she's going to be super excited about that. Uh, she just turned 13 this summer. So I'm really proud of her that she even knows how to crochet, let alone that she's like finding out her own ideas and inspiration and writing her own pattern. So I'm really excited about that. So these are all my items that I'm adding to um, my second market. And I'll meet you back here as usual and let you know how this second market goes. Now, we tweaked a little bit more of this new setup that we used at the market that failed. It was still a good experience because other vendors and the few customers that came through, we kind of got a little feedback on which things they thought were the cutest. So we wanted to display those more prominently and which things um, were not getting much attention and we thought that they would so we kind of moved those towards the front of the table that kind of thing 
So for the second market I've been referring to in this video, we tweaked that setup even more and we changed a few items around. We have a mermaid down in a box on the ground with the cat, we changed around a few things on our sign with the watermelon at the bottom. The leggy frogs are out at the end of the table where they can really be seen. We've got chickens out of that three-tiered stand sitting on the table and that worked well. I have all of my regular mushrooms and my pot mushrooms in a basket together. We have the bracelets on a new stand. We've combined some of the food items over on the smaller four-foot table. Just little tweaks and changes that we could do that we thought would better it and make it more cohesive for our customers so they could kind of see an array of one kind of product in one area and one in another area, even though they all fall under crocheted plushies. And we're really trying to focus on putting our best sellers farther out toward the customer as they walk by so they don't have to come in and look for them. The weather was great for this event and it had a great turnout. So let's run down everything on my Excel sheet of what sold. Now, I don't do anything fancy for this. I have an Excel sheet that I made that says how many I have. Uh, like I have cats, I have 17 in stock, so I've got 17 little boxes. And then uh, the code that we came up with is if somebody pays in cash, I write a dollar sign in a box. And if somebody wants to pay on PayPal or Venmo or with a card, we do a check in the box. That way we can kind of keep track of how many of our customers want to purchase in cash and how many want to purchase in an electronic kind of way. And I would say about half of our customers are still paying in cash despite having all of the other options to pay. So first up on the list is cats. We sold four cats, one bee, two octos. I sold two big chickens, which I was very excited about. We sold five triceratops, one s'more, one small strawberry, four baby chicks, and two pot mushrooms two $5 keychains and one of the mushroom keychains, one of the pop turtles, and then one of what I would call a large pumpkin. I have four sizes. I have like a small, medium, large, and extra large, and we sold one of the large ones, which I was happy with for an event in July. I was not expecting to sell pumpkins, but I had them done, and the Custom, the average customer that would come to this is someone I think would buy pumpkins, so I thought it was worth sticking a few on the table, and it turned out it was. And then I'm saving this for last, even though it's not last on my Excel sheet, but we sold seven leggy frogs. All total, we made over $600 for the day, and that is after taking out Venmo fees and the and the event fee and any other um, electronic fees that we had to pay. So I would say that's not bad. This event went from nine to two. So for a five hour market, we made $600. That seems to be our average so far is about $100 an hour if you're counting just the time that the market is open. Of course, we invest more time than that because we have to set up and tear down and pack the van and prep the items and things like that. But a general rule has been if it's open for five hours, we make about $500 or more. And this time we were able to make $600 in five hours. So that's it for our double market blog. And I would say it was totally worth it to jump in and find that second market and turn that complete fail into a complete win. We were able to, at both of these markets, establish relationships with more vendors who gave us even more events that we should go try out. And they said, your stuff is perfect for this other thing I went to. So... I'm sure that going to that fail of a market is going to pay off for us in the future, even if it's just in making connections with other people and getting the word about other markets that we can make money at in the future. Thanks for hanging out and just keeping it completely real with us on what our actual experience was at these markets. And if you've made it this far in the video, please leave a comment down below with the word frog, since frogs were our biggest sellers. And I'm going to pop that pattern on the screen right here if you'd like to go check it out. Have a great day.